Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Luca Belli. Dr. Belli is Professor of Digital Governance and Regulation at Foundation Getulio Vargas Law School in Brazil, where he directs the Center for Technology and Society and the CyberBricks Project. Luca served as Net Neutrality Specialist for the Council of Europe and was the founder of the Net Neutrality Coalition of the United Nations Internet Governance Forum. His works have been quoted by numerous media outlets, including The Economist, Financial Times, Forums, Le Bond, and BBC. Okay, Luca, you know about your challenge. Telling us what, if anything, is wrong with the European Commission consultation on the future of telecoms and connectivity. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Caroline, for this opportunity. And actually, it's... Uh, it's very nice to have this kind of conversation because it makes me feel much younger because it's it's pretty much the same kind of conversation we had uh, 10 years ago, uh, exactly a decade ago about net neutrality. And when at that time, uh, some uh, telecom lobbyists, uh, to be fair, not all uh, telecom operators, only those that have a relevant market power and have a particular interest in, uh, let's say, um, redefining how uh, the uh, internet, open internet model works, because there is, of course, a, a relevant uh, market incentive in doing so, right? Uh, what is now proposed with the fair share uh, consultation, it's uh, pretty much what decades ago already was known as the sending party networks pay model. So basically a proposal to charge content providers for access to broadband subscribers. So it's actually a proposal to charge twice for the usage of broadband networks. So charge both the user and the content uh, provider. Uh, and uh, well, this is quite questionable in terms of uh, net neutrality, and I will uh, come back to this in a couple of seconds. But first, I think it's also quite curious the way in which this consultation has been has been proposed and uh, the, the needs that actually undertake this consultation, especially according to Commissioner uh, uh, Breton. Uh, and I, I, I am re-quoting for what he was uh stating at the Mobile World Congress uh, some weeks ago, uh, stating that uh, actually uh, during the, the pandemic, we faced, so I'm quoting, we faced a serious risk of our networks collapsing. And he also continues saying that he personally called CEOs of streaming platforms uh, to ask them to uh, reduce quality to avoid congestion. And that is actually available on the European Commission website, the entire speech of Commissioner Breton at the Mobile World Congress. And I think that this way of framing the fair share consultation is not really fair because uh, it's not really accurate, first, to say that during the pandemic there was this uh, risk of network collapsing. Uh, and then actually, if the pandemic showed something, it was a very good stress test that uh, allow us to say that net neutrality model in Europe works well. Well, on the one hand, uh, the REC, uh, the body of uh, regulators of electronic communications in Europe, uh, they collected data, evidence, and I think evidence-based policies should be based on evidence, as the name uh, suggests. Uh, and so the REC collect the data at that time, and it showed that, yes, of course, there was an increase in congestion, but there was uh, no need to actually trigger those sort of emergency measures that the open internet regulation, regulation 2015, 21, 20, already includes in Article 3, right? So that is a very important point. Of course, with the pandemic, everyone at home, there was uh, increasing congestion, but networks were not collapsing, or at least no operator reported publicly the day network were collapsing and they needed to implement the special uh, measures that Article 3 of the uh, of the Open Internet Regulation in its uh, third paragraph uh, 
indent C allows to, pre to prevent impending network congestion and mitigate the effects of exceptional or temporary network congestion, of course, provided that the measures are non-discriminatory, so that equal types of traffic are treated equally. So those special measures, they have not been implemented by the network uh, operator that can do it legally. So if that uh, extraordinary congestion uh, that would lead to collapse was de facto happening, uh, there was a measure to cope with it and was not uh, used. So one may, say, may assume that there was no collapse impending, right? On the one hand. On the other hand, it's a little bit curious that the, a commissioner calls the CEOs of streaming companies when there is this uh, legal tool already available for, for uh, network operators uh, to mitigate the effect of these extraordinary congestions. And lastly, and I think that this is a very important point, let's remind that be, before the 2020 Telenor case judged by the European Court of Justice, where de facto the European Court of Justice stated that zero rating uh, uh, offerings are not compatible with net neutrality. Until 2020-2021, many network operators in Europe were offering uh, free and unlimited uh, video to their customers as one of their offerings. So it's very curious to think that at the same time, operators may, may complain about collapsing network for congestion, but also offering unlimited video, which is supposedly <laughs> the, the cause of the congestion. So uh, it, it, the, the, two, the, the two cannot be true at the same time. It's, it's not possible that there is collapsing networks and at the same time, zero rating keep on going with people allowed to enjoy unlimited video, right? So this is, I think this is, is a little bit curious that the consultation is presented like this. And while I, I totally sympathize with the underlying problem, uh, tech giants need to be taxed differently, need to contribute more to uh, public expenses, uh, one need to, to, to redefine the way in which they shift profits and erade uh, and erode uh, their taxation base. It's called profit shifting and base erosion for this reason. So that is the main problem. But the fair share is not a solution to this problem. Is It creates another problem uh, that does, does not solve the first problem. So I think uh, a more uh, rational and well-informed debate would be in the benefit of everyone, all stakeholders, especially European consumers. Thank you, Luca. I, I, I tried not to smile when you said rational debate and Brussels in the same sentence. <laughs> but, you know, um, I, who knows? I, I take your point that indeed, um, although congestion might have been an issue, nothing collapsed in terms of infrastructure um, uh, during the pandemic. And, and I, I like the expression, a stress test. Uh, that that certainly uh, is is a good way of framing it. Um, I, I also would like to thank you for highlighting the fact that the fair share is about net neutrality. It will affect net neutrality. Uh, and statements made by policymakers that fair share is separate from uh, net neutrality might be over optimistic, uh, to say the least. And finally, I take your point that um, if a tax needs to happen, it should be the mainstream tax that happens with uh, all companies that uh, get profits out of a country <laughs> and, and that maybe more um, uh, work should be done for big tech to contribute fairly, let's use the word, um, to the public interest uh, in, in, in the countries they're active in. Uh, I think that's uh, certainly a message that has been conveyed by many civil society operators and others, and let's hope that uh, more work is done on that front. Thank you so much for your contribution, especially considering you're all the way from Brazil. Um, and uh, let's hope that the consultation uh, comes out with a rational result. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much.